I have a feeling we're going to have some friends joining us as we go over the next few minutes here. So let's just settle in. Things happen. Even better to go to our breath now and it will all wash it over. So as usual, find your comfortable place to begin. Back to your mat, back to your safe space. Feel your sit bones grounded on a blanket, on the floor, something to take your pelvis a little higher than your knees. We try to find that slightly tilted forward position of our pelvic bowl. It sets up the alignment for the rest of the spine. Feel the weight of your legs releasing to the earth. Feel the muscles in your hips soften. Maybe start to feel the energy moving from your hips down your thighs, out your knees towards the ground. This wonderful platform and stability rooting our physical and energetic cells so we can rise, start to feel the rise of the energy through the spine that imaginary energy tube that lies just in front of the spine. Grounding forces, lifting forces. You can feel the arch in your low back, the natural curve. You can feel the gentle binding of that low rib ring that we're so familiar with now. When we bind in the low ribs, we start to bring the chest tall. The heart opens. Shoulder blades release down your back. Same curve in your low back as in your neck. It's a lordosis, the natural curve. Many of us seated during the day with our heads forward, we start to lose the curve. It starts to flatten. Take your hand, put it in the nape of your neck there and see that there's a little bit of an arch. Let's take our hands back behind us, open your heart. Feel the pectorals release, maybe the green light from the heart chakra emanating towards the sky. Let's release our elbows back towards the hips, palms up or down, receptivity or grounding. With your eyes closed, envision the back of the skull aligned with the sacrum, feeling the support behind you being held up and activating some of the musculature in your back and around your spine. Take a moment, do your internal architectural scan. See what's being fed back today. All of our sensory satellites in our body, feeding back the information to the brain. What's happening in your mind? Maybe a little rough start today. Hard to connect in and getting a little anxious. See if we can just switch that off. All good. We do that through our breath, through our conscious breath. It's the trigger to release the tension and stress from the system and calm our minds. It's the exhalation component that's even more potent for triggering that response. I'll ask you to inhale through your nose as always, warming and hydrating and purifying the air and prana, the life forces we invited in. And breathe out through the pursed lips. You can hear and feel the winds, the exhaust as they leave your body. All the physiological mental debris, let's clear it. Practicing all around the world, again, here we are on Sunday. See if you can find your own breath and see if we might be able to unite our breath. What a beautiful thing to be able to connect in. Let's sit for a minute and calm the system.
before you open your eyes, take your thumbs, cross them like bird wings, right over the heart center. It's a compassion center. It's a calming position for our hands. Feel your heart beat inside your chest. Feel the warmth or perhaps that green light emanating out into your palms. Stop for a moment here and feel your humanness. Blink your eyes open, look at the front of your mat. Bring the gaze back up and our helium hands, up they go. Fingertips touch the ceiling right through the roof of your house out into infinity. Feel that, feel the rise, feel the opening. Maybe the muscles between the ribs starting to soften. The bottom of the rib cage pulling up off the bowl of the pelvis, finding our long waistline. Keep the low ribs engaged. Look up at the hands and take your thumbs back behind you. It's the opening of the upper back. Less than shoulder flexion, more through the extension through that thoracic spine. Allow the head to fit back between the elbows. Touch the palms together. Interlace your fingers. Steeple hands index to the sky. Sit bones down into the core. Again, close your eyes. A beautiful position here. The rib cage open. Take a deep inhale and a real slow exhale. And on the exhale, move the index fingers a little closer up towards the sky. A little side winding side to side with our bodies. Rib cage opening again. Waistline becoming aware of our physical forms. Bring it back to neutral, press the hands together, inhale on the exhale, slowly lower down through your main central, third eye, tip of the nose, lips, throat, onto your big heart. Thumb stay at the heart, the heart rises, the shoulder blades release down the back and feel how free the neck has become. Inhale, exhale, spin the hands to the earth, we get right into the neck, hold the right hand to the earth, Inhale, and on the exhale, left ear towards left shoulder. Soften in. We know this, yogis. The weight of your head and gravity is doing the work, right? Concentrate on the breath, softening the right side. And look what happens. The weight will take your ear closer towards the shoulder. Beautiful. Inhale back up, and same thing, opposite side. Left hand holds the floor, right ear softens in. Inhale the head back up to center on the exhale. Left hand turn with the chin on the horizon line. We know it's the advantageous position to find that rotation in those vertebrae in your neck. When you get to the end of the range, give a little shake of the head, yes. Clear out the debris. Bring it back to neutral and perhaps you can go just a little bit farther. Beautiful. Inhale back through center. Exhale around to the right, chin on horizon line. Explore the end of the range. Do your shake of your head, yes. And bring it back, see if you can come around a little bit farther, nice. Inhale back through center, right around to the left you go again. A little cleaner that second time, and let's go a little bit deeper, inhale. Exhale, right hand holds the floor, chin will move out towards or to the right shoulder, left shoulder point. Nice. Inhale back through center. Exhale around to the right. Inhale. Exhale. Reach out. See if you can touch that shoulder point. Inhale back through center. And on the exhale, release the chin to the jugular notch between the two collarbones. Reminding you just in the neck, if possible, keep the mid and upper back out of it. Let's trace the chin on the collarbone now. Inhale. On the exhale, trace the chin along the line of the right collarbone. Keep it nice and tucked. If the chin starts to leave the bone, then pause at that point. Otherwise, explore the end of the range back to that same shoulder tip. Inhale back through the center, trace it on the collarbone, then around to the left you go on the exhale. Explore the end again. Feel how the right side of the neck gets a beautiful release. Inhale it back through center. On the exhale, reaffirm, press of the fingertips, sit bones. Pull the low ribs in and bring your heart tall. Pause for a moment here. Open the heart. Imaginary hand behind the heart, pushing it forward. 
Inhale and on the exhale, lift the crown towards the sky, feel the length to the spine, and then push forward from the heart and find a big arcing movement from behind your heart all the way up to the back of the skull. Remember, no pain allowed in the spine, no dizziness. See if you can explore the end range. Go for the stretch of the anterior neck from your chin to your collarbones. Beautiful yogis. Inhale back to center. Exhale, release. Let's take our L hands up. Thumbs onto the tops of the thighs, our stable posts. Inhale. Exhale, push down on the thighs. Find that as you're grounding and then start to rock the pelvis forward. We know this mobility of the pelvis on stability of the legs. Feel the sit bones as they start to leave the earth. Pull the low ribs in, tuck the chin, our Jovandara Bandha and Uriyana Bandha. Find the stability here through the use of your bellies and your back muscles. Let's root down now. Take your elbows to your side palms are up. Inhale and on the exhale, root into the earth. Reach out, index fingers forward, thumbs towards each other. We've got that imaginary marble under the index, roll it towards the thumb, press the fingertips into the earth, keep your wrists in that nice parallel, and spin the elbow creases to the sky, your shoulder blades will adhere onto the ribcage. Inhale. On the exhale, let your elbows release towards the earth or a prop, ground in. Inhale, exhale, pull the elbows and hands back towards the knees in that isometric pull and feel how long your spine is now. Yeah. Inhale. On the exhale, let the crown of the head go. Feel the stretch all the way down, maybe to your sacrum as the head releases, a big traction. Inhale back up. And on the exhale, walk your hands back up to the tall sit position. Wonderful. Switch your legs now opposite if you're in half lotus to your uncommon cross. And we'll take our arms up for our cactus arms. Wide spread fingers. Go ahead and open and close the fingers here, remove the energy. As we pump our hands, it moves the energy and blood right up into our shoulders. Open the hands. And let's bend the middle finger down today and touch the palm. It's called a lagu point. It's a high potency point. Open the hands and out of those points come your laser beam. Shoot them to the front of the room. See if you can discharge some of the junk in our system. Nice, yogis, take the thumbs back, inhale. And on the exhale, drop the thumbs back, find your hitchhiker shoulders. Inhale them up, shine the palms, and on the exhale, drop them down. Fingers towards the earth, internal rotation. Back up again on the inhale. On the exhale, thumbs back, external rotation. Inhale. Exhale, down they go, internal. Beautiful, take them back up on the inhale and on the exhale, fly machine arms, bring them together. Turn the palms to face you, inhale, exhale. Press the sides of the hands and elbows together and rise up. See if you can take those elbows up, keeping them together close to your nose or your third eye. Pause for a moment there. Inhale, take the arms apart and on the exhale, slowly draw down. Right, slowly through that thick fluid, resetting the whole upper quadrants. Do that a few times, pressing up and coming down. Last time. Elbows at the side, turn your light bulbs. Find the freedom in your forearms, the wrists, up into the queen wave, up overhead, hallelujah arms, back down they come, queen wave, and light bulb hands. Shake them out, get rid of some of that junk. Now let's take our hands behind us today. Interlace your fingers in this seated position. Put your palms together and see if you can touch your sacrum with your thumbs, and then pull your shoulders back. So the thumbs are on the sacrum, we find that grounding point, Push into the sacrum so your pelvis will rock forward a bit and pull the shoulder blades back together. Nice. Straighten out your elbows now. So they come back behind you. Our palms are still touching if possible. Maybe your thumbs are on the floor and the back of the, towards the back of your mat. 
Pause for a moment here, feel the opening through the shoulder girdle and maybe some tingling down into the arms. Take the hands up now so the wrists will rise, the backs of the wrists will come up. We feel the opening. Nice, release the hands back to the earth, some tingly arms. Reach them out now, find that real long bird wing. Grab your tennis balls and flap your wings. Move the energies. Ignite the rotator cuff here. Let's take flight. We land and find the grounding and lifting. Coming up maybe above the 90 degree point now, provided it doesn't aggravate your shoulders. And our pterodactyls will need to turn into eagles right on top, left on bottom. You guys know how to modify this. Maybe your arms will be like this. See if you can get your fingertips in your palms or maybe just the backs of the hands. Tricep flesh parallel to the floor. Find your sit bones as your stable point. Inhale. On the exhale, we're not leaning forward. We're protracting our shoulder blades. Take the right into the left and feel the slide of the blades on the rib cage. Inhale back to center. And on the exhale, pinch those blades back together. Feel the opening. Inhale it back to center. Make a right hand turn on the exhale with the arms only. Stretching the back of the left shoulder and mobilizing the right. Go ahead and look over the right shoulder now. Feel that rotation now that we've recovered. Bring it all back to center on the inhale and on the exhale. Left hand turn just with the arms. Bring on the stretch on the right and the mobilization on the left. Inhale and on your exhale, look over your left shoulder. Inhale it back to center. My favorite piece on the exhale, drop the elbows down. Left elbow will move towards the rib cage, make it all in the shoulder blades first. And then start to bow into the pose. We round our upper back. Let the crown of the head release towards the ground if possible. Big, wide open shoulder blades stretching our rhomboids. Inhale back to center the arms. On the exhale, pull the low ribs in, take the elbows up. Blades will slide down, then move into that. Position behind your heart, the imaginary hand pushes the heart and the elbows go up and maybe release the head back, no dizziness. Wonderful, yogis, bring them back to neutral on the inhale and the exhale, release the arms down. Take them up opposite, left on top, right on bottom, find your modification. Inhale, exhale left into right, draw the blades forward. Inhale back to center, exhale, pinch back, mobilize that upper back. Inhale back to center, exhale around to the right. Arms and turn your gaze, starting to warm the whole system up now, beautiful. Inhale back to center, exhale left with the arms. Look over left shoulder. Inhale back to center, release the elbows first, slide the blades up. Move it into the spine, start to bow forward, release the crown. Inhale back up, exhale, ribs in, elbows up first, blades will come down. Move through that upper back, into the neck, and maybe the weight of the head releases back. Inhale back to center. Exhale, release your L hands right down onto the tops of the thighs. Find your stable pegs. Inhale, exhale, rock the pelvis forward, starting to lube up those hip joints. Keep the chin tucked, Jondarabandha. Root arms, elbows at the side, palms up. Inhale, and on the exhale, reach out. Feel the connection, right? Chain reaction, hand to the ground, up into the wrist, to the elbows, to the shoulders to the blades, release the elbows down. Let's do our hood ornament, inhale, exhale, hands press the earth, elbows do they come back towards the knees, find those millimeters of space again in the spine, reclaim it, see if you can find another moment here of lengthening and then release the crown of the head to the earth, big traction action down the spine. Inhale back up. And exhale, walk your hands back up, tall, sit position, beautiful. 
Let's go ahead and get off of our blankets or props. Open the legs after sitting. Take your hands forward of the shoulders a bit. Take the right foot back, inhale and on the exhale. Curl the toes under, send the right heel to the back of the mat. Always feels so yummy in the back of the leg. Heel back, crown forward, back of the knee towards the sky. Pause for a moment there, find the sensation. Inhale. On the exhale, rock it forward onto the tips of the toes of the right foot, over onto the top of the foot, articulating through the foot and ankle, feeling that movement of all those small tarsal bones in our feet, phalanges in your toes, inhale, exhale, roll the toes back again, push the heel back, second round, maybe a little bit more accessible. Draw righty forward, take lefty back, same thing, heel back, crown forward, back of the knee to the sky. Pausing for a moment here, inhale, exhale, Inhale again. On the exhale, tips of the left toes, over you go. Find the movement as many of the joints in your foot and ankle as possible. Inhale, exhale, roll back through the toes, push back. Open up. Good, let's move into Virasana now. Take your knees together, ankle bones together, and see if you can Sit your buttocks back onto your heels. You guys know how to customize for this too, right? If it's too much in your knee joints, slide a blanket underneath. Maybe you need something under your ankles. Maybe you need to sit on a block. Something that will allow you to move your pelvis back and forth. So let's see if we can find the pelvic movement in Varasana today. Hands on the top of the pelvis, inhale. On the exhale, rock it back into posterior tilt, see how everything caves in, and then start from the pelvis, rock it forward, pull the low ribs in, bring the heart up, and the head will come up. Inhale, exhale, release it again, posteriorly tilt the pelvis, round the spine, bring the chin towards the chest. Inhale, on the exhale, anteriorly tilt the pelvis, pull the low ribs in, bring the heart nice and tall, the head will come up. Beautiful. Take your right hand onto your right knee. Inhale. On the exhale, lift the right shin off the floor. See if you can feel the plantar flexion in the ankle and the stretch of the shin muscle, tibialis anterior. Do the other side. Lift the left. Plantar flex the ankle a bit more. Put it down. Take our knees real wide today. Take your hands inside your thighs. Inhale. On the exhale, slide the hands up the inside of the thighs, way to the top. Anytime we forward fold, we want an internal rotation, so let's do that. Inhale, exhale, roll the hands towards the groin. We internally spiral those hips and start to bring yourself forward. Feel the arch in the back and the hands helping to keep the internal spiral. Nice, take your arms out in front now. Let's do sphinx arms. So not all the way down, hands out in front, elbows in front of the knees, inhale, and on the exhale, hands press the ground, elbows press the ground, and pull them back towards your knees and find the length to your spine. Inhaling and exhaling, and every exhale a little bit more length, so we're ground through the pelvis there, finding the spinal movement, trying to open up the space, the discs get plumped. Beautiful. Walk the hands back up towards the knees. Let's come up onto all fours. Continue with this same progression. Toes curled under. Inhale, exhale, take your buns back. Find the opening in the back. So we were just there, except we had more bend, bend in our knees. Inhale the body weight forward. On the exhale, release the feet and start your first push forward from the pelvis and maybe to the bottom of the rib cage. Let's rock it back again. Curl the toes under. And take it back a little bit farther into the range so your hip flexion angle and knee flexion angle will increase. Inhale, pull it forward. Release the feet on the exhale. Come up now through the heart so that the chest will shine through the shoulders. The head is real relaxed. If your low back is pinched, you slide a block underneath your pubic bone. Let's go back again. Inhale, exhale, curl the toes under it. 
Take it back now. The toes are still curled under, but see if you can go back, bums towards heels. Maybe your forehead will touch the ground. Inhale back up, release the feet, and come through your expression now of hanging cobra. Find stable hands here. So the shoulders aren't up by the ears. We have stability in our shoulders as we try to open the heart through the shoulders here. Maybe even a stretch into your belly, your abdominal muscles. Inhale, pull it back. On the exhale, knees go wide and push back wide child. You were close there a moment ago. Look at your hands. They're out in front of your down dog hands. Those will release into sphinx arms, forehead to the earth. Inhale. Exhale, pull the hands and elbows towards the knees isometrically. Again, find length to your spine. Release that and let your pelvis rock side to side, lubricate the hip. Remember, no pinchies allowed on this. That's not a good sign if you have pinchies side to side, back off. Bring it back to neutral. Let's inhale up through scared cat and release right down into your hanging cobra. Let's see if we can descend a little further or farther towards the earth here. Inhale. On the exhale, bend your elbows. Keep them close into your body line and maybe try to put your pelvis down on the ground. No pinches in the back, share it through the whole spine. Inhale back up, scared cat. Last time, now knees go wide, push back, wide child. Fall into it slowly and gracefully, forehead releases. Pelvis goes to the right and to the left, starting to find that opening. Good, bring your pelvis back to neutral. Inhale yourself back up. And let's go through our cat cows. Take the tailbone up, move through the sacrum, release lumbar spine, thoracic spine, cervical spine, and look up. Our spines are getting a nice opening here. Inhale, and on the exhale, keep the gaze up, but bring the pelvis under. Bring the spinal points, the spinous processes towards the sky. Move through the upper back, and then let the crown of the head release to the earth. Inhale, exhale, keep the gaze between the knees, and Go back through that again, articulating through the 24 different spots that are supposed to move in your spine. Keep your eyes closed, yogis, and go back and forth through this several times. Really try to find your stuck spots, the ones that need a little extra attention and breath. Take a moment now, let it dissolve into what you want to do. Maybe some figure eights, maybe bend an elbow. Maybe shift a hip, do what's right for you. Eyes closed, nobody's watching. Just find your dance for a moment. Feed into what your body needs. Beautiful, we haven't done Twisted Child in a while. Let's do Twisted Child today. It's a wonderful way to get our thoracic extension and rotations. Take your right hand forward on the mat a little more stable. Curl the toes under if they're not already and arch the back. The sit bones go to the back of the room. Try not to move the pelvis on this. Inhale. And on the exhale, take your left hand out to the left side and up. Look at your fingers and watch the fingers as they go higher to the sky for the strength of your muscles, not the shift of your pelvis. Hold that for a moment, Tito. Inhale. Exhale, gracefully slide the left hand under. Find that. Thread the needle, shoulder down and head down. Don't press the head into the earth, just rest it. Slide the left hand through a little bit more now. You'll see you'll be able to protract that shoulder blade. Go ahead and turn the palm up and down now. You're internally and externally rotating your shoulder. Find that opening and movement. Bring the hand to rest and slide it through a little bit more. The palm is up. Walk the right hand forward now. You can look at it or just reach out into infinity. Reach way out, find the opening to the right side body. Remember, keep the pelvis contained and start moving that right hand around to the left. See if you can get your right elbow over that right ear. Press the palm into the earth, right palm, and then maybe try to sit back just a little bit with the buns. And then find your rotation. Yogis, press the hand into the earth and look at the right armpit. Yeah. Find the breath into the left lung. It's being squished by your rib cage. See if you can inflate that left lung purposefully. 
If your right hip is shifted to the right, see if you can pull it back over towards the left. Beautiful. Slide the right hand down. Now on the mat, it'll be in front of the left elbow. Let's use the right hand to create more rotation. Inhale, exhale, push the right hand into the earth and find the rotation. Remember, it's ribs up. So, oh my goodness, look at all that movement we have in our rib cage. Stay here if you're already challenged. Take the right hand, otherwise onto your sacrum, the middle finger towards the bottom of your mat. Push down into the sacrum and look what happens. You can rotate into that position, maybe a little bit more. If you'd like to go for the bind, take the right hand into the left hip crease. Use that as your impetus for just a bit more opening. Aware again of not pressing the head to the ground, finding soft. Wherever the hand is, release it back to the earth. Inhale and on the exhale, push back up. Ooh, so nice. Reset. Arch your back. Take the left hand forward onto the mat. Inhale the right hand out to the right side. Take it up. Reach way up. Don't shift the pelvis. If you can help it, keep it in neutral. Take the hand way up. Mm. Inhale. Exhale, slide it through to thread your needle. Shoulder goes down, side of the head goes down. Keep the pelvis in its neutral position. Slide the right hand through a little bit more. Turn the palm up and down a few times. Wonderful stretch of the posterior cuff there and deltoid and the mobilization of our ball and socket. Nice, come to rest. Right palm is up. Inhale on your exhale, walk lefty forward, way out. The cat claws the carpet, find that long side body. Inhale again, and on the exhale, walk it towards the center of the mat, and then over towards the right side of the mat, maybe your elbow is over your ear. Inhale and on the exhale, push the hand into the earth and find your rotation. Look what you can do. You can really rotate the heart towards the sky and look up. Release, slide the left hand down, and it'll end up in front of the right elbow. Inhale, exhale. Big push of the left hand into the earth, find that rotation. Yeah. Ribs attaching into the thoracic spine, find that movement. If you got some more room, take the left hand onto the sacrum, push into the sacrum, and find rotation. Don't push the head into the earth. If you want to bind, try taking that left hand into the right hip crease and use that as a little bit more impetus for rotations. Beautiful. Inhale and then exhale. Take your head back to the earth and push back up. Let's find ourselves on our backs. Go right into crazy legs. Knees together, feet apart, arms out in a T. Please try to keep your knee in contact with the opposite shin. Inhale. On the exhale, let the right knee slide down the inside of the left shin. It's a contained movement as the legs start to lower to the left. And the knee starts to leave the shin, stop at that point. Inhale, back up to center, nose and knees aligned, and on the exhale, opposite. Left knee down inside of right shin. So much happening here, lubricating the joints and strengthening the muscles as we move through this so slowly. Go back and forth with this a few times, consciously guiding the knee up and down the shin. Your butt cheek comes up, but the sacrum mostly stays down. Keep the legs moving and the arms, take the thumbs into the elbow creases. As your legs go to the left, your arms go to the right. We're corkscrewing here, right? We're wringing out the Dish rag, inhale it all back to center, nose, elbows, knees, everything, and then release to the other side. Beautiful, legs right, arms left. Keep it going, inhaling and exhaling. This is a great default one if you're feeling a bit anxious or tense or the body just kind of feels like it needs a good lubrication, try it. And the head now, the head will follow the knees as the arms go in the opposite direction. Head and knees and arms opposite. Always inhaling back to center and exhaling to find the extremes of your range. Add the eyeballs to it now. Eyeballs follow elbows while head follows knees. Eyeballs, elbows, head, knees. Dissolve into that for a few more rounds.
and let's meet back at center. Right into bridge, arms at your side, middle fingers touch the heels for most of us. If your arms are short, they won't touch. Turn your palms up. The hips are slightly internally spiraled. Lift your toes off the floor and then put them back down again. Inhale. On the exhale, push the whole sole of your foot down into the earth. Your back muscles fire up. Feel that. Draw the egg up into your pelvis like an elevator rising. Pull the belly in to contain the belly and then lift the hips off the ground. We're using our core stability here to lift. Lift up, see if you can get your pelvis right across from your knees. Beautiful. Take your hands underneath your back, interlace your fingers, do your shimmy shoulders, right shoulder blade under, left blade under. The best reminder I have for you on this is remember the rest of the bridge is not from coming into your low back, but coming into your upper back, your thoracic spine. Let's see if we can do it. Look down at your heart. Inhale. On the exhale, move your heart towards your face as your arms press into the ground. Beautiful. Let's go into our robot arms now. Elbows at the side, fingertips to the sky. Inhale. Exhale. As you push your elbows into the ground, your lats fire up, your shoulders extend, and your heart opens. Pause here. Maybe squeeze an imaginary block between the knees. Contain that. Straighten your arms out. Touch the ceiling with your fingertips. Don't press the ground with the head. Inhale. Exhale, arms come up, they drape over the crown of your head, take them to the back or the top of your mat there. Pause here for a moment, find the strength in your bridge, wherever it's sagging, see if it can add some fortification. Inhale, exhale, arms go up, the elbows will release down, the arms release down, and let's slowly lower, keep the press of the feet, Come to the bottom of the rib cage. Skip your low back and imprint your sacrum. Look at that beautiful movement. And then the soles of your feet together. Supta Konasana. Knees out to the side. Pinwheel legs. Let the legs rock side to side. Starting to open the adductors, the groin muscles, and continuing on with our hip lubrication. Bring the pelvis back to neutral. Take your hands to the outsides of the legs. Move them back together. And back into bridge you go. Feet hip distance apart. Fingers touch heels. Turn the palms up. Inhale. Exhale. Soles of the feet press the earth. Pull the elevator up. Tack down the belly. Lift your hips. Often asked how, many, how much glutes do you use here? If you squeeze too tight with your glutes, your hips will externally rotate. So squeeze hard enough that you don't feel like they're turning out, maybe 20% of your power. Take your hands underneath your back, interlace your fingers, do your shimmy shoulders. Elbows to the side for robot arms, inhale, exhale. Elbows press down, look at your heart, come right at your face, a big open dome of your upper back. Straighten out the arms, fingertips to the sky, inhale, exhale, draw the arms back behind you. Lower them back, try to press the ground with the backs of the hands or the thumbs, the whole upper back fires up to support our bridge. Inhale and under and exhale, arms up, elbows down, open the heart, release the hands, and slowly down you go towards the earth. Touchdown. Right leg over left, piriformis stretch. Some of our favorites today. Right out. Right ankle outside of the left knee. That's safety for your ankle. Pull the toes of the right foot towards the right knee. That's safety for your knee. Check your pelvis. Be sure the pelvis is level on the floor here. Right hand on the right thigh. Inhale. Exhale, give a push. Push with your right hand. Start to open up the hip, but don't skew the pelvis. We'll use some of our science now to open the hip more. Inhale. Exhale. Push the hand to the knee and the knee to the hand. The butt muscles, the deep six will fire up, release, and then give it a little bit more push. Look what you can do. You can really open up that whole hip joint. Let's do it again. Inhale, exhale, push the knee towards the hand, the hand towards the knee. Hold it for maybe eight seconds or so. And then on the release, discover that, oh my goodness, my hip softens. 
push the hand towards the sky now. See if you can feel the unbridling of the hip here, all the energy and awareness. And let's go deeper. Take the right hand through the hole in the legs. Grab the left hand behind the left knee. If your elbow is, or your arm is long enough, keep the right elbow on the right knee to keep the hip open. And let's go ahead and bring the knees towards the chest. Go ahead and round your low back off the floor. So provided you don't have any pinch or discomfort in your back with this, that's all fine and good, but that's flexion of your back. Let's see if we can just move the hip. Inhale, and on the exhale, release the sacrum to the earth. So look what happens. You guys know where your sacrum is between the two pelvic bones. As you imprint the sacrum to the ground, feel how your low back arches off the floor. That's the natural curve. And then from that awareness, draw the knee up a little bit more and it goes right into your hip. Keep the awareness of the sacrum imprinted as you straighten out your left leg now. So find your first hamstring opening there. Bend it, let your heel release towards the buttock and then straighten it and feel the hamstring as it starts to open. Pull the toes towards the face, add the calf into it. Slide the hands down the back of the left leg. Now your hands will be close up towards the top of the hamstring and push the back of the left hamstring flesh into the hands to soften the hip again. See if you can find that. If your belly is aware enough and strong enough and your left quad is, take your hands off the back of your left thigh without the pose degradating. If it feels like it is, then keep your hands where they are. Push everybody, push your sacrum and print it towards the ground and feel how wonderful it is for your low back and it goes into your hamstring. Beautiful. If you're holding your leg, release it. Everybody put your left heel down close to your butt cheek. We'll do single leg bridge. Same cues. Inhale. Exhale. Push the left foot into the earth. Pull up your egg or your elevator. Tack down your belly. Don't press into the back of the skull, but lift your pelvis, pushing into the left foot. Take your left hand on your left butt cheek. Feel how it's working really hard. Put your right hand on your right butt cheek. Probably not so. Squeeze the imaginary marble between the cheeks and look what happens. The whole right side of the pelvis rises. We're using our glutes to extend our hips. Take your hands underneath your back and let's do shimmy shoulders, single leg bridge. Pause here for a moment. If you're feeling a hamstring cramp on the left, a clear indication that your glutes are not doing what they're supposed to be doing in your hammies or trying to take over. Nice yogis, take your hands out and slowly lower down. Come down real slow through the whole spine. Skip the low back, imprint the sacrum. So nice, soft landing. Let's do our rotation now. This is the best part. Inhale, on the exhale, roll to your left. So the right foot goes down on the earth. Left hand will hold the right shin. Underneath leg, crawl up to the back of the mat. See if you can use the little toe of the left foot to crawl it back. Right hand you can use just to see, okay, my low back is perpendicular to the earth now. Bend that left knee and see if you can grab your shin, your foot or your toes, and then roll your scapulae onto the earth, the shoulder blades. We can go a little deeper into the rotation, release the right foot for a second, push the left elbow into the earth, lift the heart and rotate, then grab onto the right leg again and see if you can look over your right shoulder. Pause here for a moment, see where the restriction might be. Feet into it, maybe you can take the left leg back a little bit more, oh yummy, right into your quad. And then let the right leg oscillate back and forth a bit in the hip there. Kind of a squeaky cream screen door. Beautiful. Let that release. If you're holding your underneath, leg soften it, let it straighten out, and roll back onto your back, right leg cross for safety. Listen up. Your body's saying, please do the other side. Switch legs, put the right one on the ground, take left heel over the top. Outside ankle bone or the ankle bone on left ankle there outside of your right knee. Take the right hand onto left shin and push the leg towards the bottom of your mat. Remember, don't skew the pelvis just enough to open the hip. 
Let's use our contract relax to help to open the hip, inhale, exhale, push the left hand towards the left knee, left knee towards the left hand. We find the isometric press, hold it for about eight seconds. And as you release, look what happens, the whole hip complex opens. Let's do it one more time. Inhale, on the exhale, back into it you go. Push the hand to the knee, the knee to the hand. Release, feel how it softens. Give a little push towards the sky, all release from socket. A little bit deeper, slide the left hand through the hole in the legs, grab the right hand behind it. Go ahead and roll the low back up off the floor for a moment as long as it's not creating any discomforts. See if you can find a little better positioning now, right? Sacrum releases down, low back stays at the arch. And then when you straighten out your right leg, your hamstring will get all the stretch and you won't load your back. Bend the knee again on the inhale and on the exhale. Imprint the sacrum, straighten out the leg, find the stretch of the hammy, and then pull the toes towards the face, stretch your calf muscle, gastrocnemius. Slide your hands down the back of your thigh. Your arms will come closer up towards the top of the thigh. Push the hamstring flesh into the hands. Find that softening. If you feel like your core is stable enough, release the hands. Right leg straight up to the earth. Oh yeah, sacrum again, imprints. If you're holding, release, everybody put your heel down close to the buttocks, single leg bridge, inhale. Exhale, sole the foot presses the earth, pull the imaginary egg up, tack down the belly, hoist it up, find the opening through the front of the right hip. Right hand on the right butt cheek, it's working. Left hand on left butt cheek, make it work a bit more level off the pelvis. Hands go underneath, do your shimmy shoulders, see if you can find that opening, single leg bridge, powerful. Release the arms and slowly release the spine back down to the earth, skip the low back, imprint the sacrum. Let's roll it now to the right, inhale, exhale, roll over onto the right, be sure your head is supported on a prop or on the ground. Left hand will hold the shin, draw the leg up a little bit, sole the left foot stays on the ground. Underneath leg, crawl it to the back of the mat. See if you can grab your shin and roll the shoulder blades. We worked so hard on all of this for months and years, some of us now. Feel the benefits. Take the right elbow, press it into the earth. Yep, roll the heart, find the rib cage. Movement, see if you can slide the underneath leg back a bit more. And then find your screen door left leg. Articulating the hip, yeah, softening. If you're holding your underneath leg, really sit, roll under your back's left leg for a moment, still crossed. And release the feet to the ground. Into our hamstrings, grab your strap, guys. We'll do our five-way belt stretch. And we're gonna stand and do a few poses and try to end with some of the hip stuff we did last week. Got some good feedback on that. Most of you know this. Let's go through, take the strap, sole of the left, right foot, straighten out your leg. Let's go into that sacral imprint thing again. Be sure you're not just flattening into your back, but you got some awareness of the sacrum press. One strap in each hand, go ahead and towel off the bottom of your foot now. So the ankle stays stable. We towel off the bottom of the foot to activate our acupressure points, bring some awareness to the sole of the foot. Have it come to rest now, it's across the metatarsals where your toes meet your foot. Pull the strap down, push the foot up, the right quad contracts, you can feel it. And when the right quad contracts, the hamstring softens. So as you pull your leg up, be sure you're not flattening your back, but you've got the sacral imprint going. Your hands can be up. Your elbows can be on the ground, whatever feels better for you. 
Straighten out your left leg now, please. Tadasana, slide it down the mat. Long, long leg. As lefty goes out, righty might be able to come up a little bit more. Close your eyes. See if you can just find your edge there. Envisioning the ball releasing down in the socket and towards the ground. So at the hip, we can fine tune what we're doing. We're not just cranking the right leg up, but the hip softens first. We'll open the right leg out to the side now. Try to keep the hip in the same position. Don't let it release towards the bottom of the mat. Take the strap into the right hand, inhale. Exhale, let the right leg move out. Look at your right leg. Look at it as it starts to lower to the ground. The toes are to the top of your mat and the inside ankle bone is to the sky. I suggest you hold the strap in the right hand and the left hand. So the right elbow is on the ground and the strap is also holding, you're holding with your left hand to support the weight of your leg, especially if your legs are somewhat heavy. Try to keep your sacrum down. Right, so the left butt cheek isn't rolling off the ground, it's staying down and use the lever here. And, oh my goodness, find that opening to your strings. Inhale the leg back up to straight leg raised position. Keep the sacrum imprinted, switch the strap to the left hand and take the right leg towards the left side. It's only about 45 degrees, right? The sacrum is gonna stay down and there it goes right into your hip rather than loading your low back. Hang out here for a moment. Pull the strap up and push the foot down. Activate the muscles again. Quads in your hammies will soften. Inhale the leg back up to straight leg brace position. Let's roll it now. So we just did something just like this in the piriformis. We should be a bit more open. Left leg bent. Inhale. Exhale, push down into the left foot, bridge up and then roll over onto your side. It's very familiar, right? We were close to this a moment ago. Switch the strap to the left hand, grab your shin. We pre-warmed it, beautiful, and roll yourself over onto your rib cage, onto your shoulder blades. So what's different here? Our right leg is out straight. Yeah. Use the left elbow, push it down into the earth, raise the heart. Mm -hmm. And look over your right shoulder. Hang out here for a moment. Use the strap in the left hand to stretch your hamstring and your right hand to open your quad a little bit more. Awesome. Release the underneath leg if you're holding it. Roll back onto your back. Let's do three very long breaths in a straight leg raised position. Right is up, left is straight out. On every exhale, give a little bit more tug to the strap and your hamstrings will get the message, I can soften here. Two more long, slow, deep exhalations tied to the stretch and release of your hamstring. And the left knee, put your foot on the floor, bend the right knee, take the strap off. Put the strap down on the left side of your mat and straighten out both legs. What does right feel like compared to left? A whole world of difference. So lucky we are. Let's go ahead and match right and left. Bend your knees. Maybe a little less mechanical on the other side now that we've reviewed it. Take the strap on the bottom of the left foot. You got one rein in each hand. Keep your ankles stable so it's not flopping side to side and towel off the bottom of your foot. Bring on that opening heat. Come to rest now, strap at metatarsal line. Arms can be up or elbows down, whatever feels best for you. Pull the strap down, push the foot up. Left quad will contract. Push your sacrum down. Look what happens when the sacrum pushes down right into your hamstring. It goes, you unload your back. Inhale, exhale, straighten out your right leg. Right leg really long down the mat, and then see if maybe you can lever up, take lefty up. And it's not from the low back rounding. We know this now. 
sacrum stays down and we find the movement in our strings. Yes. Let's get ready to open out to the left side. Take the strap in the left hand first. Inhale. Exhale, lower the left leg down. Look at the toes or to the top of your mat, the inside ankle bone towards the sky. I recommend two hands, left elbow on the ground, right hand helping to guide. Keep your eye on the target, on the toes of your left foot and see how you can get them closer to the top of your mat while the right butt cheek stays down and of course the sacrum stays imprinted. Hang out for a moment at the end of the range. Discover maybe a little bit more length. Inhale the left leg up to the sky. Switch the strap to the other hand and take it across town now 45 degrees. If you keep your sacrum down, look what happens immediately. Your hip just softens. So it's not about rolling sacrum and butt cheek up, but keeping them down to get the direction of forces onto that lateral hamstring muscle. Feels so good, rectus or biceps favoris, our forgotten string. Okay, we're ready to rumble now. Take that left leg up, bend the right knee, inhale. Exhale, bridge up, roll over onto the right side. Big toe, left foot, boot onto the earth. Be sure your head is supported on something. Crawl the underneath leg to the back of the mat. Grab your toes, the instep or your shin. And look what happens. You can roll yourself onto your back. We've prepped it. Bend the right elbow, push it into the ground. Roll the heart. Look over the left shoulder now. Use the strap to stretch left hamstring and your left hand to add a little bit more stretch to your right quad. Soften in for three breaths. If you're holding your underneath leg, release it. Oh, luxuriate back onto your back. Right leg out long on the floor, left leg long up to the sky. Do your three long breaths again here. Concentrating on the exhalation, allowing the fabric to soften. Breathe the energy and the awareness into the hypersensitive spot in your hamstring and look what you can do. It's mind over matter. Bringing the awareness to the spot, it softens. When you're ready, bend your right knee, bend the left, take the strap off. Stretch your legs out for a moment here. Look what we've done to our bodies. Let's go ahead and stand up now, yogis. Bend your knees, roll over onto your right side. Come through a thoughtful process of getting up, maybe one knee forward, push off the back leg and stand. Grab your blocks. We're gonna do our quarter, half, three quarter, full forward fold and back bends. The blocks are designed to go high up into the groin and we use them to find the musculature to keep us safe in bringing ourselves up and down from the ground. Find your Tadasana feet, big toe, little toe and heel, the cuboid bone on the outside of the foot, push it into the earth. Feel those strong legs, Tadasana legs. Block like a Pez candy will extend first. So put your hands on your pelvis, inhale. On the exhale, Tadasana feet, squeeze the block and push it forward. Feel how you wanna go into back bend, right? Use the hands to posteriorly rotate the pelvis and just a little bit of back bend from your low back. Keep your elbows drawn in. Inhale back to center. Exhale, Tadasana feet. Squeeze the block and take it back behind you now. Use your hands to anteriorly tilt the pelvis and flex the hips. You just come down a quarter distance. Reach the crown of the head towards the bottom of the mat there. Good. Inhale back up. 
Exhale, squeeze the block, push it forward, feet into the earth, posteriorly tilt, extend the hips into the low back and right up into the bottom of the rib cage. So the head's still in neutral, finding the back bend through our lumbar spine. There's a lot of movement in there. Inhale back to center. Exhale, Tadasana feet, anteriorly tilt the pelvis, flex the hips, arch the back and bring yourself up into a flat upper back position, crown of the head towards the top of the mat again. Pause here for a moment and periscope the spine really long. Use your hands to push the pelvis back, but look what you can do. Your spine is so long right into your hamstrings. Inhale back up, squeeze the block, push it forward, posteriorly rotate the pelvis, extend the hips, lumbar spine, bottom of the rib cage, and the hand goes behind the heart. Oh my goodness, open the heart. Neck is still in neutral. Inhale back to center. Exhale, squeeze the block. Push it back behind, back into it, Tadasana feet, anteriorly tilt the pelvis, flex the hips, arch the back, and let yourself fall through a little bit farther. Keep the weight evenly distributed on your feet, maybe let your hands slide down to your shins. Crown of the head still forward, and then flex the hips a little bit more. Don't round the spine and see if you can maybe let the crown of your head release towards the earth. We're still three quarters. Inhale, back, slide the hands back up, right up onto the pelvis, squeeze the block, push it forward to Dasana feet, elbows draw in for support, extend through the hips, low back, mid back, and if it's okay with you, let your head release back for your full expression of your extension. Inhale back through center, so glorious. Find your feet, your hips, your back, we flex, we hinge the hips, but the spine stays long. Release your hands down now. Maybe they will easily touch the earth. Maybe your hands are above your knees. It doesn't matter as long as you're following the guide of your anatomy here and not going too far into it. Hang out down here for a few. Squeeze the block. Be sure that you're pushing it back behind. It's going to ignite the muscles, release the crown of the head. You can always keep the knees bent a little if your hamstrings are tugging too hard. Let's be very safe coming up. Bend your knees, put your thumbs into your hip creases. Use that as your lever back up. Take your arms up over your head. Turn your palms to the sky. Touch the roof. Out into the clouds. Your feet down deep into the earth. Release your hands to your side. Beautiful. Into Utkatasana, the chair pose now. Take the block out. One quick reminder for you guys. Remember when we bring our arms up overhead, try not to go into a low back bend, but upper back. Feet hip distance apart. Nice, strong, stable legs. Feel the grounding force. Inhale on your exhale, grounding force, but lifting force. Let's pause here, look up at your hands. Pull your low ribs in, and as you exhale, back bend your upper back. Inhale. Exhale, Vermont ski jumpers. Hands come to your side, bend your knees. Try to sit your buttocks back, get your thighs parallel to the floor. Middle fingers scrape the ground, take your arms back behind you, way back. Little fingers are up to the sky, pause here. See if you can lift your buttons back. Don't have it in your knees, but use your glutes. Lift your rib cage off your thighs, shine your heart to the front of your mat, look up, tuck your chin, inhale, exhale the arms or the afterthought. Elbows go by the ears. Your shoulders will not open if your upper back is rounded, so try to get rid of the upper back rounding and go for the shoulder flexion. Beautiful, inhale. Exhale, push down into your feet. Come back into Dadasana. Pull the low ribs and back bend. Inhale. Exhale, flow through it again. Bend your knees. Sit your buttons back. Middle fingers touch the floor. Back, they go back behind you. Try to get your buttons down, thighs parallel. Take your palms and reach up to the sky way back. Bring your ribs off your thighs, shine your heart forward, keep your chin tucked, look forward, inhale, exhale, arms come up. Feet pressed down with the fingertips, touch the sky. 
press into your feet, bring yourself back up, hands release to your sides. Okay, let's combine much of what we just did. Grab your blocks, come to the top of your mat. Put your block down the corner, top corner, right corner of your mat. The toes of your right foot are just in front of where your block is and step your left leg back, about three feet back. Pelvis is forward. Take your hands on your pelvis. We're gonna do virtually what we just did, except our legs are apart now. Inhale. On your exhale, Tadasana feet. Got to find your strong legs. Tilt the pelvis and keep the sit bones towards the back of the room as we start to lower down. Put your right hand down on the block and your left hand onto your sacrum. As you push the left hand into the sacrum, lengthen out the spine. Look at the crown of the head. It's going to touch the top of your mat. We prep the handies a bit. We've definitely hit, worked our hips. See if you can find some peace in the pose here. Let's come on back up. So bring yourself back up and do exactly the same thing to begin. And if you feel you can come along for the rotation, do so or just stay with right hand on the block. Inhale, exhale, tilt your pelvis. Push the sit bones back, lengthen it out from the crown of the head and put your right hand down on the block, we just did it, and left hand on the sacrum. So we're back to where we started. Perhaps you'll stay here, lengthening out the crown of the head and finding the spine. Let's switch hands if possible. Take the left hand onto the block and the right hand now onto the sacrum and lengthen out. It's a big stretch on that right hamstring if you'd like to add some rotation, find your stable legs, your stable arms, and then start to rotate the torso and look towards the right side of the mat. Keep the legs as straight as possible, and if you can add the arm to it, add the arm to it. Beautiful. Release the hand back to the sacrum. Lengthen out. Switch hands right to the block, left onto the sacrum. Oh, feel what you can do with those micro adjustments in your pelvis. Inhale back up. Exhale, step forward with your left foot, bend your knees, switch the block to the left side, the toes of the left foot just in front of the block there and take your right leg back behind you. Pelvis stays forward. So again, it's the same thing we did a moment ago. And our forward bends, except our legs are apart. Keep your pelvis level. Inhale, exhale, anteriorly tilt the pelvis, arch the back. You got the idea. Tadasana legs, long spine. Left hand down onto the block, and right hand onto the sacrum. Use the press of the hands and the feet. Yeah, feel the stability there. Nice, yogis, and lengthen out your spine. Gaze can be down, gaze can be up whatever feels more stabilizing for you. Good, let's come back up again. Come to tall stand, find your strong legs to bring you there. Level off the pelvis again. We'll return to where we just were, and if you'd like to try some rotation, we'll just switch the arms. Inhale, exhale, anteriorly tilt the pelvis, flex the hips, find your very long hamstrings. We work them. Take the left hand down onto the block and the right hand onto the sacrum. Try to find the straight legs and strong legs. Switch hands if it's in your abilities, right hand over to the block, left hand onto the sacrum. Feel what happens there. You can twist into it with stability. Your hands are helping and your feet are helping. See if maybe you want to rotate the pelvis or sorry, the rib cage and bring it around. Use the press of the feet and the hand, maybe take your left arm up now for your rotations. Return to where we were, left hand on sacrum, right hand on block, gaze down. Switch your hands, left back, right onto the sacrum, long spine. Great work, yogis. Bring yourself back up again. Tall position. Turn now. Feet are forward. 
and farther apart. See if you can have your toes and heels aligned rather than the heels out and toes in is better for your ankles. We'll do a forward fold now. It all happens from our pelvis moving, not our legs. Put your hands on your waistline, then onto your pelvis, and then onto your thighs. So you're on the tops of your thigh bones. You got it. Inhale. Exhale, internally spiral. We did it at the beginning. Remember, internally spiral. I told you every time we forward fold, you want internal spiral. And lower down. I'm sure you can see we're combining much of what we've prepped you for. See if you can find the level or the equal weight, big toe, little toe, heel, and cuboid, and come down to this upper back flat, low back arched place. Release your hands to some blocks or to the floor. So no rounding in the spine, maybe readjust the feet, maybe they need to come apart a little bit more. Internally spiral the hips and arch the low back and look what happens here, come a little bit farther down perhaps. It is not from reaching back with your nose towards the back of the mat, but it's lengthening the spine and finding the lengths here, adductors and hamstrings. Perhaps your elbows will release to the earth or to some blocks or to a prop. Walk your hands back now so your fingers and your toes are aligned. Elbows to the back of the mat, release the crown towards the earth. Walk your hands forward. Come back to the start position. And we're gonna turn to the right now. I'd love for you to keep your concentration on your pelvis. Nobody hurt your backs or sacroiliacs here. This is all from the hips and from the rotation in our thoracic spine. Let's see if we can do this. Start to walk your hands around to the right. So I'm gonna advise you take your left hand, if you're stable enough, take the thumb up into the left hip crease and internally rotate it. Feel that stability. Now from the ribs up, start to turn the rib cage and look towards your right knee. Maybe that's it. If it feels like you've got some space here, release the left hand to the floor, walk it towards the toes of the right foot. Perhaps the right hand will go outside of the right ankle, perhaps none of that. Left sit bone to the back of the room, rotate from your rib cage and bring it around. Internally rotated left hip and rotated rib cage. Beautiful yogis, walk them back through center on the inhale and on the exhale, reverse. Start to walk the hands around, right? We know what we're doing. Take the left hand up into the hip crease, internally rotate it. And with that, find the rotation through the ribs, roll the heart towards the knee. Maybe the left hand on the outside of the ankle, maybe the right hand over towards the toes. Welcome back to center, up onto the fingertips. See if you can go a little bit deeper on this last round here. Now we flex the hips and arch the back and sit bones, elbows releasing down. Inhale back to center and make it easy on you. Just walk your feet in. See if you can bring them in underneath the shoulders. Toes forward or turned out, heels down or maybe on a blanket into your yogic squat, bringing your perineum towards the earth, elbows inside, palms together, thumbs on the heart. Back to decompression here, guys. Inhale, exhale. Push the knees in towards the elbows, but push the elbows out into the knees. Do it very slowly. Ramp on the energy and ramp off the energy. You feel the spine as it opens. Release, inhale, exhale, push the knees in, push the elbows out. Oh, grow that spine really long, crown of the head's gonna touch your ceiling. Beautiful, release the hands, let's sit back. We'll go into a twist, right leg over left. Big toe of the right foot on the earth, fist to the ground. Mirror with his down dog, beautiful. Press down into the ground, lift the hips and put them down. 
hands on the knee, big open heart. Inhale the arms up, and on the exhale, twist the ribs to the left. So the nose is the last thing to rotate around. Try to have it happen through the muscles. Look to the little finger of your left hand. Inhale back to center. Exhale, right hand in turn. Look over at your right hand. Inhale back through center, twist left, corkscrew, and then release the arms. Use that to help to rotate a bit more. Perhaps you can feel the work you've already done here and all of our rotations today. Inhale back through center, exhale around to the right. Release the arms and rotate. Inhale back through center, lean back onto your sacrum, find your elegant legs, cross them the opposite way. Fist press the earth, lift, sit bones down, hands on the knee, big open heart. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, right hand turn, have the nose do the last movement. Look over at the little finger of your right hand, inhale back through center, exhale left. Release the arms, use that to pull. Inhale back through center, exhale around, open twist. And back around, you get two rounds with arms twist. Beautiful, back to center. Let's go ahead and do the two poses we did last week again so we get some of the rust out of it, right? So let's take the left leg out and the right foot in. This is the two differences to remind you one's a forward fold and one's a side bend. Your left foot is off to the left there and it would be very difficult to touch. So let's see if we can readjust the pelvis to make it safer. Press the fists into the ground, lift the whole pelvis, and then slide the right knee over and look over at that left foot. So now your pelvis is addressing the foot. If you know your strings are tight, you might take a strap on the bottom of your foot, or you could bend your knee, or just don't grab the toes. Sit bones in the earth, yogis arched back, low ribs in, inhale your arms up. Turn the torso, not the pelvis, to look at the foot, Inhale again, and on the exhale, no reaching and striving, but lengthening. Lengthen out your spine and your side body. Don't try to touch the toes if they're just not available and put your hands down wherever they go to organically or use a strap. Bend the knee maybe or keep it straight. Tuck your chin, find your bandhas. Muna bandha, Uddiyana bandha, Jalandara bandha are sacrum, thoracic, and neck awareness. Keep your eyes closed and see what happens here with your attention to the detail. Lengthen out that left hamstring. Soften into it. Find the articulation in your pelvis and your hips. Inhale the arms back up, straight up to the sky. Long Dandasana arms. Turn back and face, take the hands down. Let's take the right knee out again, a bit to the right. And this is our side bending now. Bend the left knee. If your hamstrings can tolerate it, take your peace sign fingers, left hand, and sling them underneath your Achilles tendon. See if you can ignite the quad on the left and straighten out the left leg. So the arm here is a guide to help to hold the left toes to the sky and your kneecap to the sky. See if you can lengthen and then spin. Take the right thumb into the armpit. Lengthen the side body. So what we're doing here is trying to bring the crown of the head towards the toes and the left ear starts to lower towards the left knee. Rotate through the rib cage. Inhale the right arm up, grab the cloud off the sky and real slowly, the Hot iron goes to the right side of the body and lengthen out. Oh my goodness, so yummy. And really combining almost every pose we've done today. Find your pelvis as you're grounding. Find the length to your left hammy. And see if you can slowly start to fall into the side C shape. 
reaching the fingers towards the toes. Inhale yourself back up, tall position. So nice, yogis, and let's switch legs. Take lefty in and righty out. Find long legs to begin with. Remember, in a forward bend, we want to address the foot. So take the fists to the ground and lift. Turn the left knee towards the center. You're now looking at the right foot, much more aligned. Sit bones on the ground, arched low back, anterior tilted pelvis, sit on a blanket if you need it. Inhale the arms up, find the long body first. No striving, just softening. Inhale. Exhale, arch the low back, tilt the pelvis. Start to feel the length of your hamstrings and side body. I suggest you just keep your eyes closed and wherever your hand land, they land, maybe the bottom of the foot, maybe nowhere near it. Use a strap if that's best for you. Close your eyes and do three really long, slow, conscious breaths. It's amazing when we put our mind to it, what can happen to our bodies, right? Where are you holding? Blow some energy and air into that spot and you'll soften. It's very safe and slow progression with this mindfulness. Nice, yogis. Inhale yourself back up, tall sit position. Release the hands down. Left knee will move out a little bit more towards the left so we can move into our side body opening. Maybe what you want to do here is bend your right knee. Take your peace sign hand, right hand under the Achilles tendon of the right leg. Straighten out the right leg again. See if you can find that knee straight and maybe your elbow on the earth. Take your left thumb into the armpit. Inhale. On the exhale, lengthen out first. So bring the crown of your head towards the toes of the right foot. And then most importantly, rotate the heart open. See if you can find that rotation first. Keep the right elbow docked to the ground or at least inside the right knee. Inhale the left hand up, grab the cloud off the sky on the exhale. Take it overhead and reach out. So we're not reaching for the toes, right? Instead, you're concentrating on bringing your heart towards the sky. Oh my goodness, open up some of that sticky stuff, left side of the rib cage. Find a breath or two here at every exhalation, again, reaching out towards the toes of the right foot. Inhale yourself back up, real tall sit position. Take the soles of your feet, put them together. Stretch them out for a diamond shape. So feet are away from the groin. Take your thumbs into the arches of your feet. Do a quick little acupressure massage from the big toe knuckle or metatarsal down to the, the arch, down the arch of the foot corresponding to our spine and reflexology. Could keep your thumbs on the arches of the feet, maybe put your elbows down on the insides of the shins and arch your low back. See if you can find that movement as you arch your low back, the spine lengthens out. So we're getting rid of the roundedness and replacing that, oh yeah, with that yummy long spine like you're on a racing bike, right? Yes. See if you can use your hands as the pole to bring the crown of the head towards the toes. Maybe you'll switch your hands onto the tops of the feet and the elbows on the fronts of the shins. Use that, arch the back, find the release. And again, we're not targeting to touch the toes necessarily, but maybe you can start to lower the nose towards the arches of the feet and find that beautiful opening through your back. Inhale back up again. On the exhale, tall sit. Make your way onto your back. Take the right leg over the left, eagle legs, right foot behind. Calf, maybe, maybe not. Use the right leg now to stretch the left side body and down into the leg as you pull the legs towards the right. 
Inhale back through center on the exhale. We're going to roll it. You know what's happening. Left hand outside, right leg. Roll over on your left side. Again, all the prep work. See if you can allow your head to rest on the ground or on a prop. Right hand on the heart, elbow to the sky. Inhale, exhale. All that rotation you've just done, maybe, oh my goodness, you can get your elbow, triceps towards the earth. Use the left elbow to push down, open the heart and rotate. Unfurl the arms. All the energy and all the lubrication and blood flow and awareness brought to our bodies. Inhale the right hand up, grab the cloud off the sky, imprint it onto the left palm, slide the right hand forward to protract. Draw it back onto your back. Uncross the legs, cross them up opposite, left goes over right, foot behind calf, legs out nice and long, inhale, exhale, use leg to stretch, so draw them over, lefty draws over, opens up right side body. Bring them back to neutral. Let's roll now. Right hand outside, left thigh. Inhale, exhale, roll over on your right side. Knee touches down. Head supported. Left hand on the heart. Take the elbow up. Inhale, exhale. Oh, man. Roll that over. Beautiful. Use the right elbow. Open the heart. Rotate. Open your arms, your T arms. Grab the cloud off the sky left chain and bring it on your right. Slide it through. Draw them back. Roll back on your backs. Uncross your legs. Straighten the legs down bottom of the mat. Take the arms up over your head. Reach way back. Our big circumferential rib cage. Fill up those lungs to the size of the cage on the inhale. Hold the breath for a second on the end of your inhale and then let the lungs recoil and use your abdominals, push out the rest of the sludge. Notice on this last inhale how easy it is to take that inhalation now. Inhale. Pause. And exhale. Take your arms down to your sides. Grab your mat with your fists. Inhale. Exhale. Push your hands towards your feet. Your body will slide up the mat an inch or so right into Shavasana. Shoulder blades under, palms up. Either close your eyes or put an eye bag over, block out the visuals, cut down the distractions. Find yourself comfy on your mountaintop or your beachfront or in your field of wildflowers. Touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. It's a still calming point. Trace the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Now stimulate all of those relaxation spots. Tapping into our parasympathetic system, balancing our scales, taking us into our homeostasis, our even balance. Let the tongue release to the bottom of the mouth. Now lips will part. No tongue and no teeth, no gripping, no grinding all soft and vacuous. That message is translated through the rest of your body. So please luxuriate in your Shavasana. Our rebooting, right? Lucid sleep, our productive rest. Allow yourselves a moment of quiet.
such gratitude for our practice, our community, for keeping this yoga flame alive through all this adversity and bizarreness. We come back to our mats and back to our sanity. Find the marble on the back of your skull, let your head rotate side to side, start to wake the system. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, and when you're ready, bend your knees, slide your heels up towards the buttocks. Keep your knees and ankles glued together, roll onto your right side, your transition position, right side away from the heart. Often thoughts flood through our brains as we roll onto our side after practice, thoughts of generosity, of kindness, of altruism, and seva, our selfless service. Always reminded of loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. Inhale, and on your exhale, draw yourself back up to a seated place. Maybe keep your eyes closed. What's happened to our bodies and our brains? All the things that felt so important, maybe not quite so paramount. Let's feel our grounding. Fingertips touch the earth, connect in. Energetic finger palms blending our energies. Draw the energy up from the earth into your heart center, thumbs to the heart and the heart will rise. We pause here reminding ourselves to be so grateful for all we have. Inhale. Exhale, let your hands float forward, fingertips touch, fingernails touch, hands open like a lotus. Draw the sweetness into your heart centers, backs of the hands, roll thumbs to heart. Take your thumbs to your third eye between your eyebrows. It's a still contemplation point. It's the all seeing eye, ESP eye, clarity spot. Let's bow to each other. Namaste. Thanks, yogis. Sorry for a little bit of a rough start. Crapola happens sometimes. Again, grateful for the practice and for our community. It's all been recorded, so if some people missed it, they'll be able to catch up. I got a whole bunch of things coming up over the next few weeks. Keep your eyes out and peeled. Some new courses I'm releasing and some new afternoon three-hour things I'm going to be doing. So I'm gearing up, and most of you know now, too, I'm staying in Michigan the entire winter, so i got to keep myself busy. Lots of good things coming. Thanks again so much for showing up, as you always do. See you next Sunday or maybe on Tuesday, Thursday mornings in Yoga Tree Platform. going to hang out and 